Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. And I'm D. And this is Chris. And I'm Paris. Oh, nope. Guess not. It's Paris. <laughs> oh, I don't even get to speak for myself. All right, I get it. That's cool. Chris and Paris are here from the Terrible Book Club. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the introduction. Actually, no, I'm going to take it that way. I'm not going to take it negatively. I'm go- I am get to be introduced. Everyone else has to speak for themselves, but I <laughs> V-I-C sit shit. back. Exactly. I love how this is the seventh time we've done this, and I still just can't get the intro right. Oh, apologies, all. <laughs> Anyway, it's us, the Terrible Book Club. We're here again. The terrible antique book freaks have convened once again to defeat Karnaki, the ghost finder. Yeah, gotta gotta find some ghosts or, I don't know, find an old book that someone copied. Uh, find, <laughs> yeah, so fucking we're bad. just gonna find a shittily copied book. <laughs> Well, this time we're on a ship, so I hope things get spookier oh, than last time. This is gonna be, yeah, I'm excited about being about Carnival. And the word boat. "haunted" is in the title, Carnac- so that bodes well for ghosts. Yes, that's true. There's Ghost Ship, my favorite movie. <laughs> not true. I haven't seen it in 20 years. I would not recommend reviewing that film or seeing that film again. Uh, <laughs> all right, Ken, we want to tell the people what we're doing today. Sure. You are reading The Haunted Jarvie, which is a tale of an Edwardian ghost finder, much like Sherlock Holmes, only stupider. And we will be reading it Eye of Aragon style, which means we each take a turn narrating until we fuck up or crack up, at which point someone else will take over narration, and commentary and heckling from everyone else is strongly encouraged. Indeed. All right. I forget if we we don't really have a system for who begins reading these. Uh, we don't. don't we really uh, should develop one of those one of I, these I, days. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Are you guys hearing the righteous thunder that is happening outside my window right now? It's fantastic uh, no. mood setting for me. Yeah. Oh, is this? Well, just just oh, leave it in. Is the storm rolling in in Boston already? Yes. Nice. All right. Very much yes. Fucking haunted Jarvi haunting up our our actual lives. Hopefully the microphone is catching that and I can just use that as ambiance for the edit great. later. Um, I can start unless someone else feels strongly about like fighting me to the death to start the Haunted Jarvie. I don't think we've ever had no, a Paris start. We haven't had a Paris, uh, Paris start the race, so let's right. go. All right. The Haunted Jarvie. Seen anything of Karnaki lately? I asked Arkwright when we met in the city. No. He replied, he's probably off on one of his jaunts. We'll be having a card one of these days inviting us to number 472 Chain Walk, and then we'll hear all about it. We are chaffed up. He nodded and went his way. It was some months now since we four, Jessup, Arkwright, Taylor, and myself, had received the usual summons to drop in at number 472 and hear Karnacki's story of his latest case. What talks they were! Stories of all kinds and true in every word, yet full of weird and extraordinary incidents that held one silent and odd until he had finished. Yes, the weird and extraordinary incident of book forgery. (laughs) Yeah, really? (laughs) Crazy. Yeah, the phrase, what talks they were, does not deserve that exclamation point, (sighs) frankly. Agreed. Strangely enough, the following morning brought me a curtly worded card telling me to be at number 472 at 7 o'clock promptly. I was the first to arrive, Jessup and Taylor soon followed, and just before dinner was announced, Arkwright came in. 
Hey, you know who shows up to a curtly worded invite to something? People that have shit all else to do. <laughs> Is what I yeah. think. <laughs> Just imagine getting a card from someone and be like, fucking be here tomorrow at seven. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's because, yeah, it's because they're doing the exact same we're doing. Dinner over, Karnacki, as usual, passed round his smokes, snuggled himself down luxuriously in his favorite armchair, and went straight to the story we knew he had invited us to hear. I love that Karnacki is always snuggling himself. He's like a cuddly teddy bear every time he's sitting down for one of his stories. Uh, oh my god, he's Edwardian Teddy Ruxpin. He's just digging in there and getting his cigar yeah, ready. He's, he's getting comfy, you know? I've been on a trip in one of the real old-time sailing ships, he said, without any preliminary remarks. The Jarvie. Owned, Unlike this narrative. Owned by my old friend, Captain Thompson. I went on the voyage primarily for my health, but I picked on the old Jarvie because Captain Thompson had often told me there was something queer about her. I used to ask him up here whenever he came ashore and... Queer still when Karnaki stepped aboard. And try to get him to tell me more about it, you know. But the funny thing was, he never could tell me anything definite concerning her queerness. He seemed always to know, but when it came to putting his knowledge into words, it was as if he had found that the reality melted out of it. Wow, is that the first good turn of phrase we've heard in a fucking Karnacki story? The reality melted out of it. I yeah, that's that good. All right. Don't quite understand it, but I appreciate <laughs> it. The, f the first semblance of eldritch horror that we've been promised all the while. Yeah. He would end up usually by saying that you saw things. Then he would wave his hands vaguely, but further than that, he never seemed able to pass on the knowledge of something strange which he had noticed about the ship, except odd outside details. Can't keep men in her know-how, he often told me. They get frightened and they see things and they feel things. And I've lost a power of men out of her. Fallen from aloft, you know. She's getting a bad name. And then he'd shake his head very solemnly. Okay, so... They get on a queer ship, and then the men get very frightened and feel things, <laughs> and they have to leave, or else they'll feel more queer. No, Chris, I yes. think you're onto something. Okay, just, just Common checking. Common problem on a boat. Old just Thompson checking. was a brick in every way. When I got aboard, I found that he had yeah, given me the use- how many ways are there to be a brick, I wonder? <laughs> uh, you, I, I really think there's only one, but- He was rectangular and hard. <laughs> <laughs> that he had given me the use of a whole empty cabin opening off my own as my laboratory and workshop. He gave the carpenter orders to fit up the empty cabin with shelves and other conveniences according to my directions, and in a couple of days I had all the apparatus, both mechanical and electric, with which I had conducted my other ghost hunts, neatly and safely stowed away. Okay, I'm going to need a pistol, an electric pentagram, <laughs> a cat that I a can horse murder. horse costume. A cat you don't care about. <laughs> Full-size horse Baby costume. ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> baby ribbon. Yep. You cannot forget the baby ribbon. I swear. Uh, and uh, one pre-roasted clown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, about two pounds of roasted clown meat. <laughs> For I took a great deal of gear with me as I intended to interest myself by examining thoroughly into the mystery about which the captain was at once so positive and so vague. During the first fortnight out, I followed my usual methods of making a thorough and exhaustive search. This I did with the most scrupulous care, but found nothing abnormal of any kind in the whole vessel. She was an old wooden ship, and I took care to sound and measure every casement and bulkhead, to examine every exit from the holds, and to seal all the hatches. These and many other precautions I took, but at the end of the fortnight I had neither seen anything nor found anything. The old bark was just <laughs> sealing all the hatches. How are they getting any work done on this ship? I that's a good question. <laughs> To all seeming a healthy, average, old-timer, jogging along comfortably from one port to another. And save for an ind. Oh, wow, I can't say indefinable. All right, I fucked up. Someone else take over. <laughs> Were you going for indefensible uh, there? I actually oh, don't know. I had to move my mic out of the way, so I, I think I just, I just fucked up my rhythm. All right. The or me, D. Uh... I lost my pl okay. I got it. All right. It will be me. I'll take it up. <laughs> I found my place. Um, <clears throat> and save for an indefinable sense of what I could now describe as abnormal peace about the ship, I could find nothing to justify the old captain's solemn and frequent assurances that I would see soon enough for myself. This he would say often as we walked the poop together. <laughs> Afterwards, stopping to take a long 
expectant, Shit. half fearful look at the immensity of the sea around. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say half fearful look at the immensity yeah, of the poop. Uh, yeah, after they a took a poop. long expected shit. Um, <laughs> oh, in naval okay. architecture, a poop deck is a deck that forms the roof of a cabin built in the rear or aft part of the superstructure of a ship. Is it because it's in the ass part of the ship? The name originates from the French <laughs> word for stern, <laughs> la poupée, from Latin puppis. Thus, the poop deck is technically a stern deck, which in sailing ships... I thought it was called the poop because it's the ass of the ship, is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know anything about naval terminology, and I don't remember what papas was in Latin. <laughs> yeah, that's where the ship's butthole <laughs> is, so naturally you Well, I'm it. assuming we must get the word poop from poop deck rather than the reverse, right? Well, well as Ken just said, it's from the French. I'm poop. not a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, sorry, D. <laughs> That's okay. I was just thinking about like what I, I, the exquisite special fear I would experience by talking to the captain of a boat and having him look at the sea like he was scared. Oh yeah, no, that <laughs> would like, be a oh, very bad fuck. time. <laughs> this boat trip's gonna go real south. <laughs> <laughs> then on the eighteenth day, something truly happened. Easily one of the things that happened all week. <laughs> I had been pacing the poop as usual Ugh. with old Thompson when suddenly he stopped and looked up at the mizzen royal, which had just begun to flap against the mast. He glanced at the wind vane near him, then ruffled his hat back and stared at the sea. Wind's dropping, mister. There'll be trouble tonight, he said. Do you see yon? And he pointed away to windward. Amazing. <laughs> I have to add now that, like, I, I guarantee that if you have non-sailors on your boat, your whole every sailor's hobby is scaring them. Oh, it's gotta be <laughs> scaring the passengers. Oh yeah, I mean, because when have they ever had fun on this boat? Yeah, like seas blue tonight. Do you know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> the water's wet this evening. We're in for one. <laughs> wet sea at night. Passengers die. <laughs> <laughs> What? I asked, staring with a curious little thrill that was due to more than curiosity. <laughs> oh, He's, okay. He likes this sailor. Yeah. He likes him. Well, I mean, this is a this is Where? the queer ass ship that makes everybody gay, so Yeah, you know. this is a, this is a big queer ship. <laughs> right off the beam, he said, coming from under the sun. I don't see anything, I explained after a long stare at the widespreading silence of the sea that was already glassing into a dead calm surface now that the wind had died. Yon shadow fixin," said the old man, reaching for his glasses. He focused them. Is that really how you spell focus? No. In in no. England, yes. He focused. <laughs> oh, do they do a double S on that word? Yes, because they are wrong and backwards people. <laughs> <laughs> and took a long look, then passed them across to me and pointed with his finger. Just under the sun, he repeated. Coming towards us at the rate of knots. At speed, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he, was he was curiously calm and matter of fact, and yet I felt that a certain excitement had him in the throat, and I was going to have him in the throat as well. <laughs> oh my so god! I glasses <laughs> Jesus! And stared. Amazing! And stared. And stared according to his directions. After a minute, I saw it. A vague shadow upon the still surface of the sea that seemed to move towards us as I stared. For a moment, I gazed fascinated, yet ready every moment to swear that I saw nothing, and in the same instant, to be assured that there was truly something out there upon the water, apparently coming towards the ship. Said it twice, thanks. Make up your mind. Oh, it's only a shadow, Captain, I said at length. Just so, mister, he replied simply. Have a look over the stern to the norward. He spoke in the quietest way, as a man speaks who is sure of all his facts and who is facing an experience he has faced before, yet who salts his natural matter-of-factness with a deep and constant excitement. At the captain's hint, I turned about and directed the glasses to the northward. For a while I searched, sweeping my aided vision to and fro over the graying arc of the sea. Then I saw the thing plain in the field of the glass. A vague something, a shadow upon the water, and the shadow seemed to be moving towards the ship. Fuck. He saw the thing plain, a vague something. Was it plain or was it vague? Can we pick one? Also, like, 
it's probably just a whale? Like, what? I mean, they're used to seeing sea creatures. Like, why is it so scary? Could be a yeah, sunfish. Yeah, like, whales are big. It's a, shit that it's a baby wheel. It's a baby wheel. <laughs> Kanaki, come over here. Look. <laughs> it's a baby Holy wheel, shit, dude. Holy shit, Kanaki. What is that? We got to call the aquarium <laughs> or something. <laughs> Fucking baby wheel. God bless those dudes. Uh. That's queer, I muttered with a funny little stirring at the back of my throat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder where that's from. Yeah. yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> now to the westward, mister, said the captain, still speaking in his peculiar level way. I looked to the westward, and in a minute I picked up the thing, a third shadow that seemed to move across the sea as I watched it. My god, captain, I exclaimed. What does it mean? <laughs> It means you're. It means there's something. Means the you're waves. on a fucking ocean. It means, a thing that, it means you're in a boat. That's just what I want to know, Mister," said the captain. "I've seen them before, and thought sometimes I must be going mad. It's whales. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> or seals. Sometimes or they're sea plain. Turtles. Or squids. Or, seas, or literally any of the fucking large anything. creatures. <laughs> Several fish. It's gonna be a man rising out of the waves with a giant leg of rotted <laughs> mutton. <laughs> And in his other hand, he has a poorly copied book. Yes. <laughs> sometimes they're plain, and sometimes they're scarce to be seen, and sometimes they're like living things funny, that. Hmm. And sometimes they're like not at all, but silly fancies. Do you wonder I couldn't name them proper to you? I did not answer, for I was staring now expectantly towards the south along the length of the bark. Afar off on the horizon, my glasses picked up something dark and vague upon the surface of the sea. A shadow, it seemed, which grew plainer. My god! I muttered again. This is real. This... I turned again to the eastward. This isn't just a weird haunting thing that isn't anything at all. <laughs> this Not isn't fish. Thing this there aren't time. an... Everyone knows there isn't fish in the ocean. <laughs> Coming in from the four points, ain't they? Said Captain Thompson, and he blew his whistle. Twee! <laughs> Take them three reels off her, he told the mate, and tell one of the boys to shovel lanterns up on the shirt yeah? poles. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just go and shove a lantern right yeah, up your shirt poles? Shove okay? a lantern in your I'm shirt sick of like, like, all sailing terminology sounds fucking made up to me. Like, someone just was like, yeah, the mizzen, the reels. I mean, what? what is any of the poop? Like, what is any of this? <laughs> what I'm is curious, the not poop? Not to out what you, but didn't you grow up in a port city? I, I yes. did indeed. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, I grew up in that same city, and I I I am I, um, I don't know a lot about boats. Yeah, I've I've only been on boats a couple times, and whenever right I was on there. a boat with a sail, it wasn't a a sea; it was a dock. <laughs> <laughs> but shove a lantern up the, up your shirt pole is fucking great. So yeah, shove a lantern up your shirt pole, buddy. Enter my daily vocabulary. For sure, oh, but. oh yeah, 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 fucking lootly. Get the men down smart before dark, he concluded as the mate moved off to see the orders carried out. I'm sending no men aloft tonight, he said to me. I've lost enough that way. They may be only shadows, Captain, after all, I said, still looking earnestly at that far-off gray vagueness on the eastern sea. Oh, fuck. Eastward oh, God. sea. God! Eastward. Wait, like, like I, just, okay, well. I just love how none of their possibilities include large sea creatures, like whales... Schools of fish, sharks, squid, like nothing. It's like, maybe it's clouds. Like, it's not clouds, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Underwater clouds. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess it's it's me now. Yeah. I'm going to try to bring a classic back. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Bit of mist or cloud floating low. Yet, though I said this, I had no belief that it was so. And as for old Captain Thompson... He never took the trouble to answer, but reached for his glasses, which I passed to him. Getting thin and disappearing as they come near, he said presently. I know, I've seen them do that often plenty before. They'll be close around the ship soon, but you nor me won't see them, nor no one else. But they'll be there. I wish twas morning. I'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what else would you do for love, Chris? I do that. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> the captain is playing D and D. Wow. I do that. 
He had handed the glasses back to me, and I had been staring at each of the oncoming shadow in turn. It was what Captain Thompson had said. As they drew nearer, they seemed to spread and thin out and presently to become dissipated into the gray of the gloaming so that I could easily have imagined that I watched merely four little portions of gray cloud expanding naturally into impalpableness and okay, invisibility. Okay, okay, I get why it's not a whale now. Okay, I think I was confused before and thought that they were seeing like shadows of large creatures below playing atop the water, but this yeah. is actually something sitting this is the- atop the water. Uh, yeah, this is the first time they've made it clear that this is distinct from things in the which, water. Which, yeah. again, doesn't mean it can't be fog. I mean, mist, yeah, mist does, does gather on the ocean fairly frequently. And it does sometimes dissipate <laughs> quickly and come in from more than one point on the horizon. So, yeah, I'm still going with this is naturally explained as fucking mist. <laughs> Wish I took them to gallants <laughs> off while I was about it. To gallants? What like what the okay. fuck? The last one was like right. Yeah, it was like some fucking Cthulhuian word. <laughs> like I just, I just don't understand. Tagalans. Tagalans. Okay. Remarked the old man presently. Can't think to send no one off the decks tonight. Not unless there's real need. He slipped away from me and peered at the aneroid in the skylight. Uh, wait, sky. What? What, what does any of that mean? What is an aneroid and where is there a skylight? Aren't they on the aneroid deck of the ship? in the ship? skylight is my prog metal band. <laughs> you guys should check out our latest album, To Gallants. <laughs> an aneroid is a barometer that measures air pressure by the action of the air in deforming the elastic lid of an evacuated boxer chamber. Cool. Uh, cool. Of course. Okay. But I thought that they well. were on the ship. Where is there a skylight? Does skylight have a different definition aboard a ship? Yeah, Ken, I think you know the most about boats. I can't see where it would be looking looking through a skylight on the captain's cabin. If they're standing on the poop deck, then they are standing on the deck that is above the captain's cabin, which means that there will be, like, window bits in the floor where they're standing on where they can see into the cabin, which is where the aneroid would be located. Oh, Ken, I'm learning so much. Thank you. Visit our scenic whaling museum. (laughs) <laughs> actually, yeah, it's actually, one of the only things to see there. Actually, Please go. Actually read it like Ken did. <laughs> Glass steady, anyhow, he muttered as he came away, seeming more satisfied. By this time, the men had all returned to the decks, and the night was down upon us so that I could watch the queer, dissolving shadows which approached the ship. Yet as I walked the poop with old Captain Thompson, uh, you can imagine uh, how I grew to feel. Often I found myself looking over my shoulder with quick jerky glances, for it seemed to me that in the curtains of gloom that hung just beyond the rails there must be a vague, incredible thing looking inward. I questioned the captain in a thousand ways, but could get little out of him beyond what I knew. It was as if he had no power to convey to another the knowledge which he possessed, and I could ask no one else, but every other man in the ship was newly signed on, including the mates, which was in itself a significant fact. You'll see for yourself, mister, was the refrain <laughs> with which the captain. <laughs> oh, well, that was the captain. Wow. I thought that was another. Hold on. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> no, no, no. I like I like irreverent street urchin captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I already gave him the gruff voice. Yeah, like D's voice made me think of Willem Dafoe in fucking Lighthouse. And I... oh, thank you. That's exactly what I was channeling. Of course. Of course. You'll see for yourself, mister was the refrain with which the captain parried my questions, so that it began to seem as if he almost feared to put anything he knew into words. Yet once, when I had jerked round with a nervous feeling that something was at my back, he said calmly enough, Not to fear, mister, whilst you're in the light and on the decks. His attitude was extraordinary in the way in which he accepted the situation. He appeared to have no personal fear. The night passed quietly until about eleven o'clock, when suddenly, and without one atom of warning, A furious squall burst on the vessel. There was something monstrous and abnormal in the wind. It was as if some power were using the elements to an infernal purpose. Yet the captain met the situation calmly. The helm was put down and the sails shaken with three to gallons were lowered. Okay. Oh, I said with instead of while. Whoop. Oh, that's okay. Ken, you up. The helm was put down and the sails shaken while the three to gallons were lowered. Then the three upper topsails. 
Yet still the breeze roared over us, almost drowning the thunder which the sails were making in the night. Split him to ribbons, the captain yelled in my ear above the noise of the wind. Can't help it. I ain't sending no men aloft tonight unless she seems like to shake the sticks out of her. That's what bothers me. For nearly an hour after that, until eight bells went at midnight, the wind showed no signs of easing, but breezed up harder than ever. And all the while, the skipper and I walked the poop. He ever and again peering up anxiously through the dark. <laughs> I, really, the bang I just can't not laugh. I'm just not hearing laugh. squishing boots. Yeah, the whole time. Uh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just waiting for like, I slipped and fell into quite the puddle. And then they dumped me in the sea, clean me off. For my part, I could do nothing except stare round and round at the extraordinary dark night in which the ship seemed to be embedded solidly. The very feel and sound of the wind gave me a sort of constant horror. But there seemed to be an unnaturalist rampant in the atmosphere. But how much this was the effect of my overstrung nerves and excited imagination, I cannot say. Certainly, in all my experience, I had never come across anything just like what I felt and endured through that particular squall. Nope, peculiar uh, squall. Fuck! Uh, God that's fucking okay. damn it! <clears throat> it's alright, I'll fuck this up real quick, don't you worry. Mmm, I really want to do a voice, but every time I do a voice, everyone gets mad. So I <laughs> just, just go softer I, on it. it. Just do a voice, but like take it back fifty percent. All right, do a good old Boston fisherman. Ah, uh. at eight bells, when the other watch came on deck, the captain was forced to send all hands aloft to make the canvas fast, as he had begun to fear that he would actually lose his mast if he delayed longer. This is more New York. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> once again, I didn't say where the ship once was again, from. Once again, we have the confused Boston, New York accent. <clears throat> this was done, and the box snugged right down. Yet, though the work was done successfully, the captain's fears were justified in a sufficiently horrible way. For as the men were beginning to make their way in off the woods, there was a loud crying and shouting aloft, and immediately afterwards, a crash down on the main deck, followed instantly by a second crash. My God, two of them, Shout, shouted the skipper as he snatched a lamp from the forward binnacle. What the fuck? Is, what am I even saying? I'm just saying made up words. <laughs> None just of this is sounds. real. <laughs> fuck. Oh. What are we in fucking, li fucking Seuss land? Yeah, the forward binnacle atop the real mass and the fucking mizzen gigant. All right. <sighs> D? <laughs> then down onto the main deck. It was as he said, said. Two of the men had fallen, or, as the thought came to me, been thrown from a loft and were lying silent on the deck. Above us, in the darkness, I heard a few vague shouts followed by a curious quiet, save for the constant blast of the wind whose whistling and howling in the rigging seemed but to accentuate the complete and frightened silence of the men aloft. Then I was aware that the men were coming down swiftly, but presently, one after the other, came with a quick leap out of the rigging and stood about the two fallen men with odd exclamations and questions, which always merged off instantly into new silence. And all the time I was conscious of a most extraordinary sense of oppression and frightened distress and fearful expectation, for it seemed to me, standing there near the dead in that unnatural wind that a power of evil filled all the night about the ship and that some fresh horror was imminent. The following morning there was a solemn little service, very rough and crude, but undertaken with a nice reverence, and the two men who had fallen were tilted off from a hatch cover and rough plunged and crude suddenly out of sight. Just like, fuck it, throw him off the deck, whatever. He was Bob, he was up top last night, he fell down. That's bad. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Splash. <laughs> As I watched them vanish in the deep blue water of the water, an idea came to me, and I spent part of the afternoon talking over with the captain. After which I passed the rest of the time until sunset was upon us and arranging and fitting up a part of my electrical apparatus. Then I went on deck and had a good look round. The evening was beautifully calm and ideal for the experiment, which I had in mind, for the wind had died away with a peculiar suddenness after the death of the two men, and all that day the sea had been like glass. He's rigging up an elect- is Karnaki trying to shock the ocean right now? Who? I think Who so. Knows? To a certain extent. I believed that I comprehended the primary cause of the vague but peculiar manifestations which I had witnessed the previous evening, and which Captain Thompson believed implicitly to be intimately connected with the death of the two sailormen. I believed the origin of the happenings to lie in a strange but perfectly understandable cause, i.e., in that phenomenon known technically as attractive vibrations. 
<laughs> That's happened all the time on this mm. queer ship, let me tell you. Attractive vibrations. They, they were so gay, they fell out and died. <laughs> gay salt. <laughs> Hazam, in his monograph on induced hauntings, points out that such are invariably produced by induced vibrations, that is, by people fucking so madly <laughs> with the vibrator up on the top of the ship. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that sentence, then someone else can take over. Uh, that is by temporary vibrations set up by some outside <laughs> cause. Yes, my Victorian vibrator that vibrates so harshly and fiercely that it throws me off the the <laughs> mast. It's the only place I can find a fucking peace and quiet and, and alone time <laughs> up in the up in the crow's nest. It's where I go. Don't judge me. Me and Jimmy just have a good time. We don't tell no one. You don't gotta know. All right, who's who's next? I feel like I, I just fucked that up That's too hard. D. Okay, is it on me now? Yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really liking the idea of a dude vibrating himself right off the fucking ass. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what he's saying happened. That is actually what yeah, he's what perfectly he's reasonable and natural explanation. This is somewhat abstruse to follow out in a story of this kind, but it was on a long consideration of these points that I had resolved to make experiments to see whether I could not produce a counter or repellent by vibration, a thing which Harzam had succeeded in producing on three occasions, and which I have had a partial success once, failing only because of the imperfectness of the apparatus I had. That's aboard. what you get when you Too buy thick. a vibrator from Wish in Victorian times. <laughs> <laughs> A poor artist blames his tools. <laughs> Karnacki. I'm surprised you guys didn't comment on the fact that he's going to be experimenting on this boat, because yeah, I imagine he is. <laughs> as I have said, I can scarcely follow the reasoning further in a brief record such as this. Neither do I think it would be of interest to you, who are interested only in the startling and weird side of my investigations. Thank God. Yet, I have told you sufficient to show you the germ of my reasonings and to enable you to follow intelligently my hopes and expectations in sending out what I hoped would prove repellent vibrations. I cannot tell you how relieved I am that he's not going to explain that whole thing because I don't mm -hmm. care. World building. Yes. Therefore, it was that, when the sun had descended to within ten degrees of the visible horizon, the captain and I began to watch for the appearance of the shadows. Presently, under the sun, I discovered the same peculiar appearance of a moving grayness, which I had seen on the preceding night, and almost immediately Captain Thompson told me that he saw the same to the south. To the north and east, we perceived the same extraordinary thing. I had once set my electric apparatus at work, <laughs> sending out the strange repelling force to the dim, far shadows of mystery, which moved steadily out of the distance toward the vessel. Okay, but so he did make a vibrator. Is what I'm hearing. He did. Okay. It does seem like he made a yeah, vibrator. Yeah, it does seem that way. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're getting the ship off. Because I don't know what else it does. It just vibrates. That's what happens. You make the the eldritch abomination come and it goes away. Yeah. It's, and, you know, actually, yeah, that's that's the whole problem. And it, so I think <clears throat> what's happening here is the sea is also a woman. It's going after the, the, the gay lady ship. And it's like, hey. Hey, you want to you want to go out and every time she like jostles the ship, it just like fucking kills the deckhands and it's really it's really <laughs> just this love story playing out uh at the expense of human lives, which I'm here for. That's fine. Listen, that's fine. <laughs> Earlier in the evening, the captain had snugged the bark right down to her top sails. For as he said, until the calm went, he would risk nothing. According to him, it was always during calm weather that the extraordinary manifestations occurred. In this case, he was certainly justified, for a most tremendous squall struck the ship in the middle watch, taking the fore upper topsail right out of the ropes. At the time when it came, I was lying down on a locker in the saloon, but I ran up onto the poop as the vessel canted under the enormous force of the wind. Here I found the air pressure tremendous and the noise of the squall stunning, and over it all and through it all, I was conscious of something abnormal and threatening that set my nerves uncomfortably acute. The thing? was not natural. Yet, despite the carrying away of the topsail, not a man was sent aloft. Let them all go, said Cap old Captain Thompson. I'd have shortened her down to the bare sticks if I'd done all I wanted. About 2 a.m. the squall passed with astonishing suddenness and the night showed clear above the vessel. From then onward, I paced the poop with the skipper, often pausing at the break to look along the lighted main deck. It was on one of these occasions that I saw something peculiar. 
It was like a vague flitting of an impossible shadow between me and the whiteness of the well scrubbed deck. Yet, even as I stared, the thing was gone, and I could not say with surety that I had seen anything. Pretty plain to see, mister, said the captain's voice at my elbow. He's a very he's short captain. He's fours? a tiny captain. <laughs> he's, the f he's crawling around. <laughs> I've only seen that once before, and we lost half of the hands that trip. We'd better be at home. I'm thinking it'll end up in Screpiner, sure. The old man's calmness bewildered me almost as much as the fact that he was crawling around on the floor. And the confirmation his remark gave that I had really seen something abnormal floating between me and the deck eight feet below us. Good lord, Captain Thompson, I exclaimed. This is simply infernal. Just that, he agreed. I said, mister, you'd see if you'd wait. And this ain't the half. You wait till you see them looking like little black clouds all over the sea round the ship and moving steady with the ship. All the same, I ain't seen them aboard but the once. Guess we're in for it. How do you mean? I asked, but though I questioned him in every way, I could get nothing satisfactory out of him. You'll see, mister. You wait and see. She's a queer and... And that was about the extent of his further efforts and methods of enlightening me. I have, I have a question. Um, <laughs> question before we continue. <laughs> yeah. Where, what does this ship do? Like, did they ever tell us if it was like a merchant vessel or a research vessel or like just a traveling ship? Like, if they have problems where people fucking die every time, like... How does that work for business? <laughs> Easy. It's really it's, bad. It's, yeah. <laughs> really bad it's business. It's the Victorian equivalent of like you pay to get into this haunted house and you can do your ghost hunting that you're so into. You want some content for your uh, Victorian YouTube channel? <laughs> get on the Bajarvi. I don't know, Chris. I, I'm still confused about that. Sorry, D, continue. That's okay. From then on through the rest of the watch, I leaned over the break of the poop, staring down at the main deck in odd whiles, taking quick glances to the rear. Yeah. The break of the poop. I took a lot of quick I took a lot of quick glances to the rear on that ship. <laughs> <laughs> the skipper had resumed his steady pacing of the poop, but now and again he would come to a pause beside me and ask calmly enough whether I had seen any more of them there. Several times I saw the vagueness of something drifting in the lights of the lanterns, and a sort of wavering in the air in this place and that, as if it might be attenuated something having movement that was half seen for a moment and then gone before my brain could record anything definite. That was a bad sentence. You should be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough yeah, one to really. stumble over. Towards the end of the watch, however, both the captain and I saw something very extraordinary. He had just come beside me and was leaning <laughs> and was there, leaning yeah. over. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and was leading over the rail across the break. Another of them there, he remarked in his calm way, giving me a gentle nudge and nodding his head towards the port side of the main deck, a yard or two to our left. In the place he had indicated, there was a faint, dull, shadowy spot seeming suspended about a foot above the deck. This grew more visible, and there was movement in it and a constant, oily seeming whirling from the center outward. The thing expanded to several feet across, with the lighted plank of planks of the deck showing vaguely through. The movement from the center outwards was now becoming very distinct, till the whole strange shape blackened and grew more dense, so that the deck below was hidden. Okay, so this is just like the void that formed in the roasting clown room. Yeah, so I think we might see another roasting clown. Dude, if we get roasting clown on, like, high seas edition, I'll be fucking oh, stoked. Oh, God, yeah. It's I mean, you know, every every ship has its jester, right? So <laughs> they're just gonna have to sacrifice. All right, who's the funniest? Hi, sir! All right, come here. Bad news. What's <laughs> happening, sir? Don't worry. Don't even think about it. About to get real queer in here. <laughs> then, as I stared with the most intense interest, there went a thinning movement over the thing, and almost directly it had dissolved so that there was nothing more to be seen than a vague round shape of a shadow, hovering and convoluting dimly between us and the deck below. This gradually thinned out and vanished, and we were both le of us left staring down at a piece of the deck, where the planking and pitch seam showed plain and distinct in the light from the lamps that were now hung nightly on the sherp holes. Mighty queer that, mister, he said the captain meditatively as he fumbled for his pipe. Mighty queer, and he winked. Then he lit his pipe and began his, again his pacing of the poop. Wait, you just added that he winked. 
Yes. Oh, okay. yes. That was an addition. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, I was like, D, wow, you're really just seeing stuff. You're, it's like you're on the Jarvie. <laughs> no, I, I'm on the, I'm haunted. <laughs> The calm lasted for a week with the sea like glass, and every night without warning there was a repetition of the extraordinary squall so that the captain had everything made fast at dusk and waited patiently for a trade wind. Each evening I experimented further with my attempt to set up repellent vibrations, <laughs> but without result. I bet you experimented every and night with that vibrator, <laughs> Carnet. I am not sure whether I ought to say that my meddling produced no results, for the calm gradually assumed a more unnatural, permanent aspect whilst the sea looked more than ever like a plane of glass, bulged anon with the low oily roll of some deep swell. Mm. For the rest, there was by day a silence so profound as to give a sense of unrealness, for never a seabird hove in sight whilst the movement of the vessel was so slight as scarce to keep up the constant creak, creak of spars and gear, which is the ordinary accompaniment of a calm. The sea appeared to have become an emblem of desolation and freeness, so that it seemed to me at last that there was no more any known world, but just one great ocean going on forever into the far distances in every direction. At night, the strange squalls assumed a far greater violence, so that sometimes it seemed as if the very spars would be ripped and twisted out of the vessel. Yet fortunately, no harm came in that wise. As the days passed, I became convinced at last that my experiments were producing very distinct results, though the opposite to those which I had hoped to produce. For now, at each sunset, a sort of grey cloud resembling light smoke would appear far away and every quarter, almost immediately upon the commencement of the vibrations, with the effect that I desisted from any prolonged attempt and became more okay. tentative in my experiments. Now now the, the Eldritch Monster likes the vibrator. Uh, yeah, I think... You're actually yeah. really doing a great job getting it off, and now it's like, as soon as it hears it start up, he's like, oh, word? Uh, go? Oh, oh my god, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, boy, hey. <laughs> At last, however, when we had endured this condition of affairs for a week, I had a long talk with old Captain Thompson and he agreed to let me carry out a bold experiment to its conclusion. Bad idea. Ugh. It was to keep the vibrations going steadily at full power from a little before sunset until the dawn and to take careful notes of the results. Jesus. Now we're going to edge it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we'll <laughs> Well, also, like, how does that work with the ship? Like, the whole ship is vibrating all day long? That must be really awkward. Unless this is, like, the kind of vibrations that, like, which people get from like crystals and nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> I like Paris's idea that it's a massage ship now. Yeah, yeah the whole ship is, is is like one of those heart-shaped beds at a, at a motel. Yes. Yeah. With this in view, all was made ready. The royal and tagalant yards were sent down, all the sails stowed and everything about the decks made fast. A sea anchor was rigged out over the bows and a long line of cable veered away. This was to ensure the vessel coming head to wind should one of those strange squalls strike us from any quarter during Ooh, the night. Nice recovery. Thanks. <laughs> Late in the afternoon, the men were sent into the forecastle and told that they might please themselves. Go <laughs> 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 okay, in the forecastle. All right, so, all right. Get in the fuckhole and please yourselves. Uh, guys, guys, get in the oh, fuckhole and, <laughs> and jerk off. <laughs> yeah, we used to go to the crow's <laughs> nest, okay. but then we decided the forecastle is better. Uh, yeah, the captain said the whole could... the whole place is vibrating now. You guys might as well go down to the fuck hole and please yourselves. <laughs> captain said we could do this. Uh. Captain said it was okay. <laughs> it's incredible. Okay, it's me now. And told that they might please themselves and turn in or do anything they liked, <laughs> but that they were not to come on deck during the night. Whatever don't happened, don't get you come up on the deck. It's already covered in poop. Like we don't need both. We're good. <laughs> To ensure this, the port and starboard doors were padlocked. Okay, so if the ship goes down, the <laughs> crew is dead. <laughs> hot. The crew is fucking dead because Karnaki wanted to vibrate the sea. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a particularly terrible idea. What? Afterwards, I made the first and the eighth sign uh, of the Sama fuck, ritual. No. no, here we go. Opposite each doorpost. Connecting them with triple lines crossed at every seventh inch. You've dipped deeper into the science of magic than I have, Arkwright, and you will know what that means. Wait, what is Arkwright? I'm not telling the readers. Wait, <laughs> what? Arkwright Wait, knows we're... more about magic than Carnegie? Why aren't we hearing Arkwright's fucking stories? Yeah, what the fuck? Following this, I ran a wire entirely around the outside of the foxhole and connected it up with my machinery which I had erected in the sail locker aft. 
I thought he wrecked it in the forecastle. but hey. hey. <laughs> in any case, I explained to the captain, they run practically no risk other than the general risk which we may expect in the form of a terrific storm burst. The real danger will be to those who are meddling. <laughs> the path of the vibrations call it. will make a kind of halo round the apparatus. I shall have to be there to control, and I'm willing to risk it, but you'd better get into your cabin, and the three mates must do the same. And also lock themselves inside so they drown. This the old captain refused to do, and the three mates begged to be allowed to stay and see the fun. I warned them very seriously that there might be a very disagreeable and unavoidable danger, but they agreed to risk it, and I can tell you I was not sorry to have their companionship. Mm. I set to work then, making them help where I needed help, and so presently I had all my gear in order. Then I led my wires up through the skylight from the cabin and set the vibrator dial so it is a vibrator <laughs> and trembler box level, screwing them solidly down to the poop deck in the clear space that lay between the fore side of the skylight and the lid of all the right, sail locker. All right, all right, question for everyone here and everyone listening. Have y'all ever seen Preaching to the Perverted? No. No. <sighs> no. All right, if you have, there's a scene where a vibrator is used and it sounds exactly like this. There's like a little control box and then a separate, <laughs> separate thing. He has built a ship vibrator confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> confirmed. Confirmed. I got the three mates and the captain to take their places close together and I warned them not to move whatever happened. I set to work then alone and chalked a temporary pentacle about the whole lot of us, including the apparatus. Afterwards, I made haste to get the tubes of my electric pentacle fitted all about us, for it was getting on to dusk. As soon as this was done, I switched on the current into the vacuum tubes, and immediately the pale, sickly glare shone dull all about us, seeming cold and unreal in the last light of the evening. Immediately afterwards, I set the vibrations beating out into all space, and then I took my seat beside the control board. Here I had a few words with the others, warning them again, whatever they might hear or see, not to leave the pentacle, if they valued their lives. They nodded to this, and I knew that they were fully impressed with the possibility of the unknown danger that we were meddling with. Then we settled down to watch. We were all in our oilskins, for I expected the experiment to include some very peculiar behavior on the part of the elements, and so we were ready to face the night. Okay, <laughs> Karnaki's ready to get wit. <laughs> One other thing I was careful to do, and that was to confiscate all matches so that no one should forgetfully light his pipe, for the light rays are paths to certain Excuse of the forces. Excuse me? When have we ever heard that, Karnaki? Light is a path to certain forces? What? Forces, huh. capital F forces. Yeah, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. With a pair of marine glasses, I was staring round at the horizon, all around but miles away in the graying of the evening, there seemed to be a strange, vague darkening of the surface of the sea. This became more distinct, and it seemed to me presently that it might be a slow... Well, I said slow, and not slight. Ah, goddammit. Right. <laughs> Whip? Well, I tried to search for that scene I was talking about in that movie, and instead I got porn, so I'm not... Uh, I don't... I don't oh, unfortunately. Wow. Shocker, you got porn with that search Who would have thought that when you looked for vibrator No, box. I looked for Preaching to the Perverted, which is not... It's not a pornographic film, but it is a movie about like uh like fetish culture and whatever uh it's a drama it's it's a comedy drama it's funny you should watch it anyway i was like oh preaching to the perverted like vibrator scene because i figured like it's a movie from 97 i was like oh there's got to be like screenshots no just just a bunch of unrelated porn <laughs> thanks internet yeah, I got, yeah. Uh, again i don't know that your shock is warranted paris <laughs> yeah i yeah <laughs> Can you give us the first title of the first video that came up? Oh, no. oh it no, was no, no, it was no, 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 it was just uh, it was like a different play on preaching to the perverted, which is why it must have come up. It was like I see. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Anyway, womp womp. This became more distinct, and it seemed to me presently that it might be a slight, low-lying mist far away about the ship. I watched it very intently, and the captain and the three mates were doing likewise through their glasses. Coming in on us at the rate of knots, mister, said the old man in a low voice. This is what I call playing with L. I only hope it'll all come right. This is what I call taking the L. <laughs> this was all he said, and afterwards there was absolute silence from him and the others through the strange hours that followed. 
So the old man wants the ship or the force to come right from Karnaki's vibrator. Correct. Okay. Again, just checking. <laughs> As the night stole down upon the sea, we lost sight of the peculiar incoming circle of mist, and there was a period of the most intense and oppressive silence to the five of us, sitting there watchful and quiet within the pale glow of the electric ventricle. A while later, there came a sort of strange, noiseless lightning. By noiseless, I mean that while the hashes appeared to be near at hand and lit up all the vague sea around, yet there was no thunder. Neither, so it appeared to me, did there seem to be any reality in the flashes. Yeah, hey, that's normal. It's it's a normal occurrence. It's just when the lightning is too far away so that you can't hear it, but you can see it. People often call this heat lightning, even though that's not really what it is. This is a queer thing to say, but it describes my impressions. It was as if I saw a representation of lightning rather than the physical electricity itself. No, of course, I am not pretending to use the word in its technical sense. <laughs> Abruptly, a strange quivering went through the vessel from end to end and died oh, away. Oh, oh, did it! <laughs> he, made it <laughs> did. he made the ship. He made right. the vessel yeah. quiver. He did it. He oh. successfully did it. Jesus Christ. I looked fore and aft and then glanced at the four men who stared back at me with a sort of dumb and half-frightened wonder, but no one said anything. About five minutes passed with no sound anywhere except the faint buzz of the apparatus and nothing visible anywhere except the noiseless lightning which came down flash after flash, lighting the sea all around the vessel. I think, I think she's having a good time, y'all. <laughs> yeah, she's this just boat's having the night of her life. <laughs> Post-nut clarity right now for this boat. <laughs> what am I even doing haunting ships? Man, I really gotta, <laughs> really gotta, gotta, gotta get a Fuck. life. Wait, shit. I'm all right. You know what? You guys are right. <laughs> Then a most extraordinary thing happened. The peculiar quivering passed again through the ship and died away. <laughs> Aftershocks. Totally normal. Natural thing. I think one of the vagina monologues describes this phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> it was followed immediately by a kind of undulation of the vessel. First fore and aft, and then from side to side. Look, you know, you're... No, it just, it just, it just, mean, it just means, you, she, you know, you're, like, almost in the right spot. You're, the ship, ship's just, you know, <laughs> ship's just getting acclimated. I can give you no better illustration of the strangeness of the movement on that glass-like sea than to say that it was just such a movement as might have been given her had an invisible giant hand lifted her and toyed with her. <laughs> oh my I mean, her I, 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 with a curious and rather sorry. sickening okay. rhythm. Listen, usually we're like pervs and weirdos yeah, but... about the, this whole Karnaki thing, but this ship is getting hand blasted here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the ship is, well the ship is being vibrated and the ship is vibrating the sea. So I mean in that sentence that Ken just read, a giant a hand sentence. lifting and toying with her, canting her this way and that with a certain curious and rather sickening rhythm of movement. I mean, come on, <laughs> fucking Karnaki. The next sentence isn't much better. <laughs> I just oh boy. read the first clause. Oh, no. This appeared oh to last about two minutes. Okay, yeah, confirmed. Hell yeah. This is confirmed. <laughs> all, right, all right. So far as I can guess, and ended with the ship being shaken up and down <laughs> several times. This is amazing. This is amazing. After which there came again the quivering and then quietness. All right, why is the haunted Jarvie the story of a vibrating ship that fucks the sea? Does anyone know why this is what's <laughs> happening right now? Is there going to be... Is there going to be closure? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Karnaki gonna cuddle with the ship after. He does like getting all snugged down into his chair. Yeah, he's gonna he get all snugged down with his horny boat. A full hour must have passed, during which I observed nothing except that twice the vessel was faintly shaken, and the second time this was followed by a slight repetition of the curious undulations. <laughs> This, however... <laughs> when you nut and he's still stroking. <laughs> this, however, lasted but a few seconds, and afterwards there was only the abnormal and oppressive silence of the night, punctured time after time by these noiseless flashes of lightning. The boat going, I don't usually do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's the sea being like, 
All the time I did my best to study the appearance of the sea and the atmosphere around the ship. One thing was apparent that the surrounding wall of vagueness was the entirety of the story. <laughs> had drawn in more upon the ship so that the brightest flashes now showed me no more than about a clear quarter of a mile of ocean around us after which the sight was just lost in trying to penetrate a kind of shadowy distance that yet had no depth in it but which still lacked any power to arrest the vision at any particular point so that one could not know definitely whether there was anything there or not but only that one's sight was limited by some phenomenon which hid all the distant sea do I make this clear? I was inside her thighs. Oh, That's no. what's happening right now. The ship is in the thighs of the sea. That's oh, why no. we can't see anything. That's oh, my theory. No. The strange noiseless lightning increased in vividness and the flashes began to come more frequently. This went on till they were almost continuous so that all the near sea could be watched with scarce an intermission. Yet the brightness of the flashes seemed to have no power to dull the pale light of the curious detached glows that circled in silent multitudes about us. About this time I became aware of a strange sense of breathlessness. Each breath seemed to be drawn with difficulty, and presently with a sense of positive distress. The three mates and the captain were breathing with curious little gasps, and the faint buzz of the vibrator seemed to come from a great distance away. <laughs> <sighs> For the rest, there was such a silence as made itself known like a dull, numbing ache upon the brain. The minutes passed slowly, and then, abruptly, I saw something new. There were grey things floating in the air about the ship, which were so vague and attenuated that at first I could not be sure that I saw anything, but in a while there could be no doubt that they were there. Not super clear on how that's a new thing, but sure. Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> say, like, what, this is this what you described before? They began to show plainer in the constant glare of the quiet lightning, and growing darker and darker, they increased visibly in size. They appeared to be but a few feet above the level of the sea, and they began to assume humped shapes. Oh. <laughs> like some kind of fish with a humped back, like a humped back mm. whale. <laughs> <laughs> For quite half an hour, which seemed indefinitely longer, I watched these strange humps like little hills of blackness floating just above the surface of the water and moving round and round the vessel with a slow, everlasting circling that produced on my eyes the feeling that it was all a dream. This is literally a chapter in Moby Dick describing a, spa a pod of whales. Yeah, it- There's yeah, a chapter yeah. in Moby Dick where the Pequot is surrounded is by a pod of whales same. and it is described exactly like this. So are whales attracted to the sound of a coming boat? <laughs> Yeah. So it would seem. It was later still that I discovered still another thing. Each of those great vague mounds had begun to oscillate as it circled round about us. I was conscious at the same time that there was communicated to the vessel the beginnings of a similar oscillating movement, so very slight at first that I could scarcely be sure she so much as moved. Okay, whales do that too, so you're not really proving anything to me here, Karnak. The movement of the ship grew with a steady oscillation. Say oscillation one more fucking time, I dare you. It's <laughs> oscillating! <laughs> the bows lifting first and then the stern, as if she were pivoted amidships. This ceased and she settled down onto a level keel with a series of queer jerks, as if her weight were being slowly lowered again to the buoying of the water. Suddenly there came a cessation of the extraordinary lightning and we were in absolute blackness with only the pale sickly glow of the electric pentacle above us and the faint buzz of the apparatus seeming far away in the night. Can you picture it all? The five of us there, tense and watchful and wondering what was going to happen. The thing began gently. A little jerk upward of the starboard side of the vessel. Then a second oh jerk. Oh boy. Then a third and the whole ship was canted distinctly to port. It continued in a kind of slow, rhythmic tilting with curious timed pauses between the jerks. Oh boy. And suddenly, you know, I saw that we were in absolute danger, for the vessel was being capsized by some enormous force in the utter silence of blackness of that night. It's yeah, almost as yeah. though it was a bad idea to lock the crew into the deck. <laughs> They're all also, gonna die. Also, you're doing a good job, but the thighs are closing in. This is what's happening. Just just clamping over oh, the ship yeah, now. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> that's the danger you invite. Yep. Gonna be I wouldn't call it danger. 
<laughs> I don't know, man. You can stop breathing down there. That's a problem. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Listen, no risk, no reward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My God, Mister, stop it! Came the captain's voice. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that was the sea. The captain was ah. not ready. <laughs> the sea was like. My God! Ah, too hard, too hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sounded like the fucking fairies in Zelda, which honestly is fitting for this current situation. <laughs> Quick and very My moist. God, stop it. Sorry. She'll be gone in a moment. She'll be gone. He had got onto his knees and was staring round and gripping at the deck. Sorry, I just can't handle anything. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> The three mates were also gripping at the deck with their palms to stop them from sliding down the violent slope. In that moment came a final tilting of the side of the vessel and the deck rose up almost like a wall. I snatched at the lever of the vibrator and switched it over. (laughs) Time to go into high gear. (laughs) (laughs) May as well kill everyone right now while I'm at it. Instantly, the angle of the deck decreased as the vessel righted several feet with a jerk. The writing movement continued with little rhythmic jerks until the ship was once more on an even keel. And even as she righted, I was aware of an alteration in the tenses of the atmosphere and a great noise far off to starboard. It was the roaring of the wind. A huge flash of lightning was followed by others, and the thunder crashed continually overhead. The noise of the wind to starboard rose to a loud screaming and drove towards us through the night. Then the lightning ceased and the deep roll of thunder was lost in the nearer sound of the wind which was now within a mile of us and making a most hideous bellowing scream. You're really getting it <laughs> going, man. Yeah, yeah, we're all right. <clears throat> loud one. Shh, loud one I, hands. I really thought that at some point it was going to naturally cut off this joke we were making. <laughs> but but it's, no. it's really not interested in doing that at all. <laughs> no, it it is what we're saying. I I am. It's 100%. That. Yeah. <laughs> The shrill howling came at us out of the dark and covered every other sound. It was as if all the night on that side were a vast cliff, sending down high and monstrous echoes upon us. This is a queer thing to say, I know, but it may help you to get the feeling of the thing, for that just describes exactly how it felt to me at the time. That queer, echoing, empty sense above us in the night, yet all the emptiness filled with the sound on high. Do you get it? It was most extraordinary, and there was a grand something about it all as if one had come suddenly upon the steeps of some monstrous lost world. Then the wind rushed out at us and stunned us with its sound and force and fury. Does yours, does your copy also have that typo? No, no. It, ours says with. Oh, you lucky bastards. <laughs> we were smothered and half stunned. The vessel <laughs> went they, over. They were smothered, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> The vessel went over onto her port side, merely from pressure of the wind on her naked spars inside. Jesus please. Christ! I- Karnak, Time to turn over. Please. The whole night seemed one yell, and the foam roared and snowed over <laughs> us in countless <laughs> tongues. <laughs> oh my god! I'm that losing it. I'm losing my yet. mind. Oh, this is like somebody wrote this, knowing we were going to read it 120 <laughs> years later. I have never known anything like it. We were all splayed about the poop. (laughs) Holding on to anything we could, while the pentacle was smashed to atoms so that we were in complete darkness. The storm burst had come down on us. Towards morning, the storm calmed, and by evening we were running before a fine breeze, yet the pumps had to be kept going steadily, for we had sprung a pretty bad leak. Which, again, is very bad for the crew, who are still locked below decks. Yeah, that's God. insane. I'm fine. I put them in the fuck wow. hole, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe they're having their own grand time in the fuck hole. That's yeah. true. They're having a fuck hole party. Which proved so serious that we had to take to the boats two days later. However, we were picked up that night so that we had only a short time of it. As for the Jar V, she is now safely at the bottom of the Atlantic, where she had better remain forever. Wait, wait, wait. So they, all right, so they, they, they got the boat and the ocean off so good that the boat fucking, like, sunk. And then when they were on the, uh, the lifeboat, they weren't bothered? So, Correct. So only the, the main boat 
okay. I, I feel like they just it just it served its purpose. They finally got, you know, everyone had a good time and the you know, C was like, that's all right, guys. We're done. We're done. We're not here. topping this. That was the best boat orgy ever, guys. I don't think <laughs> yeah. you can really get yeah, better than God. that. Let's just go. Karnaki came to an end and tapped out his pipe. But you haven't explained, I remonstrated. What made her like that? What made her different from the other ships? Why did those shadows and things come to her? What's your idea? She's not like other ships. I was just <laughs> about to say. <laughs> Let me tell you, she's a real squirter, that one. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it got real wet. Well, replied Karnaki, in my opinion, she was a focus. That is a technical term which I can best explain by saying that she possessed the attractive vibration. That is the power to draw to her any psychic waves in the vicinity, much in the way of a medium. The way in which the vibration is acquired, to use a technical term again, is of course purely a matter for supposition. She may have developed it during the years owing to a suitability of conditions, or it may have been later. Nope. Oh, almost. Oh, wow. 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 Ken, Ken, you had a great, you had a great run there. Excellent yeah, you did awesome. <laughs> you great. went through the whole entire boat coming scene. I That's did. Yeah. I have with us regrets. Constant. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you got through that with like us constantly heckling, so that was great. <clears throat> Harris, that means you got to take us home. <sighs> All right. Um, I'll just start that sentence over. She may have developed it during the years owing to a suitability of conditions. Or it may have been in her, of her, is a better term, from the very day her keel was laid. I mean, the direction in which she lay, the condition of the atmosphere, the state of the electric tensions, the very blows of the hammers and the accidental combining of materials suited to such an end, all might tend to such a thing. And this is only to speak of the known. The vast unknown, it is vain to speculate upon in a brief chatter like this. I would like to remind you here of that idea of mine that certain forms of so-called hauntings may have their cause in the attractive vibrations. A building or a ship, just as I have indicated, may develop vibrations, even as certain materials in combination under the proper conditions will certainly develop an electric current. To say more in a talk of this scope is useless. I am more inclined to remind you of the glass which will vibrate to a certain note struck upon a piano and to silence all your worrying questions with that simple little unanswered one. What is electricity? <laughs> when we've got that clear, it will be time Magnets, to take the next how do they step work? in a more dogmatic fashion. <laughs> Vibrating boats, how do they work? We are but speculating on the co coasts of a strange country of mystery. In this case, I think the next best step for you all will be home and bed. And with this terse ending, in the most genial way possible, Karnaki ushered us out presently onto the quiet chill of the embankment, replying heartily, for our various good nights. Oh. The end. The end. Another Karnaki down. You've got to be Jesus. fucking kidding me, though. You've got to be like fucking kidding me, though. Like for real, though. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so, like, I think what actually happened is they just happened to be in areas with a lot of storms. Storms are pretty common out on the open sea, and then Karnaki came and vibrated everything, and then the ship kind of blew up and sank so like he didn't he solved it by destroying the ship <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I don't know it's not haunted anymore he, he helped it by making it a million times fucking worse I'm still not over locking the crew below decks <laughs> yeah that is a strange that was choice especially what good fuck? yeah what Extremely the fuck odd extremely odd yeah why would you do that listen they didn't that? pay to get into my boat porn pay-per-view so <laughs> what fucking <laughs> sailor boats. with two brain cells to rub together would agree to be locked below decks yeah i agree that, that makes the ones who want to keep their jobs sense. unfortunately hey can you get fired while a sea i mean i i think that's when you get keel hauled or made to <laughs> yeah. just walk the plank and die so Jesus i guess God. you can get fired permanently from life out at sea <laughs> all right well that was i man i have never i've never had uh the fortune of a text leaning harder into a joke than i am like that was that was <laughs> it was it heard you make that joke and it was like oh boy i have the fucking joke for you buddy oh wow <laughs> yeah i i think uh hodgson was 
was just a frustrated some, man. Sometimes, yeah, he, I think he he just looked at some boat hentai and he was kind of into it. So it didn't <laughs> even get into the fucking mystery. No, it didn't even no. fucking try. There's no explanation. We just get boat, 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 and ocean having sex. That's there kind of all we There's nothing that today. happened in this story that could not be explained by both storms and marine life. Yeah, I totally nothing agree fantastical you. happened here. No, and it's very weird that they. Oh, wow. Well, I will say this was a, this, a couple steps above the book forgery, which had literally oh, sure. nothing to do, not even potentially <laughs> with the supernatural. Still confused about that. At least this, like, I can see if people don't know much about like frequency of storms on the open sea or like marine how life boats or, be do. or yeah, how boats do. I could see them being like, oh, no, it's ghosts, but. It's still a uh, sad excuse for a fucking ghost it's, story. It's so weird. Yeah, like, it, it's actually started out really promising where I was just like, oh, cool. It's a very, like, a bit of a creepy depiction of all oh, the, the the weird fog rolling in. And then it and then it just, it dropped, it, it dropped the ball and then it dropped every other fuck, everyone else's balls. And then all <laughs> of the balls fell off the boat. Well, no, and then, all the balls were locked the author, inside the boat. <laughs> all the balls were locked inside the boat. And then the author, like, had one and then he was like what what the fuck was i get out of my house like whatever yeah the fucking story's over yeah it was it was <laughs> like, very it's, odd it's really one of the least satisfying karnaki stories of all time it's karnaki it was pretty more I, like suck sacky oh uh. i gotta say i i had a great time with the running um the running joke though so Oh yeah, that, that was that was good. That puts it above some of the other ones that were pretty boring. So it's a middling. It's a middling Karnaki. I give it three necks. Give it three necks. Three necks. Okay. All right. Three out of five necks. All right. In that case. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Gotta fuck that boat. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> Gotta fuck that sea. Hey everyone, Chris from the future here, thanking you for listening to another crossover episode of Terrible Book Club and Antiques Freaks. If you'd like to check out the Antiques Freaks, you can find them on pretty much any podcast service out there. Or you could just burn a clown in your living room and it'll summon them and us, so that'll help too. Anyway, let's thank our patrons. Thank you, Dari, Greg, Veronica, Will, D, Jared, Lynn, Senia, Jakub, like Chorus, Jensina, Elliot, Bobby Blackcat, Kieran, Martin, J, Scott, Luchek, C Tap One, Miri, Yanka, Robert Allen Cook the Third, David, Julius, Anya, Anonymous, and our two newest patrons, Patricia and Tommy Wizzo. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you so much for uh, being patrons for the Terrible Book Club. If you too would like to support the show, you can sign up to be a patron on patreon.com slash terrible book club, um, where you will find us posting some extra content here and there, like commentary over TV shows or short films um, or other audio visual weirdness. You could also subscribe to us on YouTube, leave a comment like a video. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Goodreads. If you're on those platforms, you can send a message to us through those platforms or by sending an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. Most importantly, we'd really love it if you shared the show on social media and told at least one other person about it. Please keep those reviews coming, and we might read them in a future episode. Thanks, everyone. See you later. <laughs>